we have to talk a bit about how you achieve commissioning. The most important thing about commissioning is not just doing it, but being seen to have done it and to be able to prove that you've done it. For this, we use a system which is a reporting system. It can be done literally just by using various Excel spreadsheets, but that's a bit complicated and a bit messy. And most companies use one of the proprietary completion systems. You've got various ones on the market. Some of the big companies, the big groups have their own. So whichever you're using doesn't really matter. They all work the same way. You start off with what we call an EPC contractor, which is the man that builds the plant for you. You're the client. You're Fred Bloggs Oil Company. You want to plant building. So you get an EPC contractor. EPC is engineering, procurement, and construction. So the first phase is engineering. And what happens is that the engineering department, all the draftsmen, all the design engineers will sit down and they will design a plant to do what you want it to do. You want it to take oil and gas. You want it to split it into the components. You want to treat it for H2S. It's high pressure. It's high temperature. Whatever you want, they will make a plant to do that. You then approve it. Then it goes to what we call the detailed design phase, where they go through every single nut and bolt, every single thing you can imagine about that plant, and they say what it should be made of, how it should be made, how big it should be, what the throughput should be, what the pressure rating should be, what the temperature, everything about it will be in the detailed engineering. Then you need to start putting that into your completion system. So the first thing is you need to know most plants will have several hundred systems. There will be an air system. There will be a nitrogen system. There will be a steam system. There will be a water system. There will be an oil system. Everything will have its own system. So somebody, usually the process engineers, will sit down and they will go through all of the detailed design and they will designate where the limits are of a particular system. This is system one. This is system two. This is system three. This is system four. When they have finished and everything is marked on the P&IDs, which is process and instrument drawings, in case you're wondering, then they will hand those drawings over to the various discipline engineers. So there'll be a mechanical engineer, an electrical engineer, uh, a process engineer, um, structural engineer, etc., etc. And they will go through the drawings and they will pick out all of their equipment in a particular system. And they will make a list. Those lists will then go to the man who does the completion system load up. And he will put all these lists into the completion system so that if you went in later on, enter the computer, as I say, they all work the same way. You press the buttons to give you system one. And it will come up on the screen and it will tell you system one consists of this equipment. It will have this test carried out on that equipment. It will have these procedures done to that equipment to make sure it's working and so on and so forth. Every one of those steps will be recorded. Every one of those steps will have a test sheet produced by the computer system to make sure that it's been done. And afterwards, nowadays, they're scanned back into the system. So it's there, it's there. You have all the disks after the finish of the job, and you can see exactly what was done, when it was done, who did it, how he did it, why he did it, when he did it. Everything is there. 
This is the completion system. Without that, you have no record of what's been done. You are just wandering in the wilderness. With that, you can tell everything that's happened to the plant. Not so much you as a commissioning engineer, but the operational engineer. Ten years down the road, something happens, and he thinks, oh, did they test this properly? We need to check. Maybe there's been an accident. Maybe the insurance company want to know. You can go back through that completion system, back through the records, and you can say, yes, look, we tested it to this pressure. We tested it for this length of time. We did that. We did the other. Everything that happened to that bit of equipment will be recorded. It gives the answers, and that's what you need. These completion systems will produce <clears throat> all of the check sheets that you need for a particular item. It will produce all the tests that you need to do. It will also produce all the progress reports. So you could look at any time and see, is that system 10% complete, 50% complete, 90% complete? And some of them, unless you have got a 100% complete on everything on the system, will not release that system for further work. They won't release the completion certificate for it. So the computer stops you going ahead if you haven't done everything. It reminds you. It says, hold on, whoa, whoa, you're only 98%. You have to think, well, what have we missed? Look on the program, it will tell you. There'll be a red light somewhere where there should be a green one. This will tell you you've missed something. There because are various people... systems on the market, as I said. Some of them are proprietary for use by companies only or by other companies that have bought that license. ICAPS is a very good one. WinPCS is a very good one. And there are a lot, a lot more. Most Construction companies have one of their own. Some are small, some are big. Some take a lot of work entering everything, some don't. As I said, you could do it with a spreadsheet, <clears throat> which would just tell you, there's the list of equipment. Has this been done? Has that been done or not? It's an easy and quick way to do it, but you stand a chance of losing things, you stand a chance of missing things. If you use the big ones, they will remind you that you've missed something. This is important. You have to be sure you've covered absolutely everything. And, and you also, as well as having this computer-driven record, you will also usually have at least one, maybe two, hard copies. In other words, all the books, everything, the original certificates will all be kept. Usually this is several big porter cabins full. For example, all the welding records, all the concrete sample records, everything for that project will be kept <clears throat> so you can prove that it was done. As we know nowadays with computers, anybody can make a computer tell you anything. But it's not so easy to make somebody sign on a piece of paper, I did this on this date. That's why the hard copies are vital. You must have at least one original hard copy of everything. That is your backup to the computer system. Then you know that the computer's not lying or somebody hasn't put the wrong information in. Very, very vital. <clears throat>